All right, folks, happy Free Agent Frenzy Day. Happy Canada Day for those of you in Canada, which is probably most of you watching a Canucks-related video. But we have three Canucks signings that we get to talk about today uh, here in the start of Free Agency. Now, most of these were rumored for a couple of days. These are names that we talked about um, during the draft stream and, and during Canucks After Dark and things like that. Um, but let's go through each of the signings. I'll give you my opinion on them, which... You might think is right. You might think is wrong. You might not care. And that's fine. Um, here's the thing. Twitter's down. So this is my only way to express my feelings. And we're going to start with the big one in Carson Soucy. Now, Carson Soucy is the only multi-year deal the Canucks have signed today. Uh, and it is obviously the most important one. It is a three-year deal at $3.2 million per year. So about a $10 million contract. Now, uh, when we discussed this on Canucks After Dark on Monday... The rumors were three or four years at three plus million dollars. And I, and I basically said, I don't want a four year deal for Carson Soucy. Like I, that just seemed that was scary to me. So so three or less. I was hoping for two. Three is OK because um, you're essentially getting a second pairing defenseman, which is a hole that the Canucks have. Right. The, the Canucks need uh, some second pairing defensemen and paying three point two million dollars for one isn't that egregious. The three years is a little scary. Um, but for right now, I I'm kind of okay with it. He's 28. He'll be 29 at the start of the season. His birthday is July 27th. Um, I mean, you look at the last couple of years in Seattle, he played a pretty, a pretty big role there, right? 16 points in 78 games. He was a plus 18 with 16 pims. Of course, plus minus isn't everything. Didn't do much in the postseason, two points in 14 games, but the previous year he, he was actually pretty impactful offensively, uh, 21 points in 64 games, uh, being a plus seven. He's basically, I mean, he's only played four seasons in the NHL, right? He, he still has a lot of miles left on him theoretically, um, you know, 250 games played. So it'll be his 29, 30 and 31 year old seasons, which is a, a fine place for a middle pairing defender. Overall, I don't really have an issue with this. Uh, it's, it's fine. Um, analytically, this is just the J fresh card um, on the right hand side there, uh, where my cursor is, you'll see sort of his percentile over time. So this is where he ranks uh, across all defensemen. Um, essentially, last year he was a, a dead average defenseman, 50, 50th percentile, um, which is fine. And it's about what you're looking for in a number three, four guy. Time on ice, third pair. That's a little sketchy, but you know he'll get second pair minutes on the Canucks because they don't have a, a lot of guys. Uh, he can play both sides. Uh, he is a lefty, so he's left shot. Um, primarily, uh, but I guess he has played both. Um, not much offensively, but but pretty good defensively uh, is sort of where uh, where this falls. And you can see his chart from last year. Had a good year offensively last year, a little bit worse defensively. Overall, will probably be fine. The next one is Ian Cole. Ian Cole um, has played forever. He's 34. He'll be turning 35. This is a name that scared me when it came up. Um, there is some... Um, uh, there's some history um, that isn't ideal that I don't really want to get get too much into because I don't know how I haven't looked too much into it. Don't know how much was confirmed or anything like that. Um, however, just from you know hockey perspective for now, uh, 34 years old um, has journeyman uh, number six defenseman essentially um, was better at one point. Right now he's about a number five six guy. Um, three year deal or three million dollar deal. Um, however, it's just a single year. So if they're thinking he's going to play second slash third pairing minutes, uh, he's going to kill, uh, kill penalties. Um, again, I don't have a big problem with this, especially because holistically are the Canucks going to make the playoffs this year? If so, then Ian Cole's a great piece. If not, Ian Cole's a great piece to trade at the trade deadline. As long as there's no trade protection, which it doesn't sound like there is, there wasn't anything reported about it. Um, uh, again, I don't really have any problem uh, from a hockey perspective, at, le at least analytically. Look at this meteoric rise he has been on. Uh, he was one of the best defensemen in hockey last year, uh, second pairing um, minutes. So I, they're hoping he'll be a second pairing guy. And again, if he is, you know, the, the age curve is what's scary. He's 34 and he'll be 35 by the end of the season. But if he can be the player he was last year, then this is going to end up being a good deal for the Canucks. Uh, one of the best defensive defensemen in hockey last year. So... One year, $3 million. Again, it seems totally fine and, and very easy to get out of at the deadline if you need to. Uh, and let's go to the third one. Teddy Bluger. One year, $1.9 million. Nice and cheap. Number three seat sort of deal. Um, you know, third liner. 
uh, 28 years old, defensive center, a big hole that Canucks have. You don't want, you know, I like Niels Oman. You don't want Niels Oman to be your 3C. You don't want Sheldon Dries to be your 3C. You need a, you need a number three centerman. Uh, one year deal, nice and cheap, one point nine million dollars, low risk. You know, he he played for Vegas. He only played six games in the playoffs, um, but he did play. Was at sixty three games last year, had sixteen points. So not a big contributor offensively, but defensively very good. Uh, sort of around the ninetieth percentile defensively, at least according to these analytics. Uh, and had a bit of an offensive uh, resurgence last year, at least play driving wise. I wouldn't get your hopes up on that again. Sort of thirtieth percentile. Not like that's not like that's too much to get excited about down here um but the two years before that probably mean more uh, and you might see him regress a little bit he's played 268 nhl games uh he'll fit in just fine as a 3c hopefully um and the canucks have really filled the holes that they had in their roster right their top six is pretty good they have a lot of wingers so they needed a number three centerman that's what they did they, they sorted that out for pretty cheap 1.19 million their defense is not good, right? You have Hughes and, and Hronick and Myers and then really not much else. Um, so going out, adding Susie, adding Ian Cole, um, you know, it, it sort of fills that up, right? You, they really had three guys before that. Um, you know, probably not unlikely that uh, Pullman will come back. Now for the cap though, the Canucks projected cap space was 1.5 million. That does not include the Carson Soucy or Teddy Bluger signings. However, with LTIR candidates, it was 7 million. However, Tanner Pearson is gearing up for preseason, apparently. So that's 3.25 that you're not going to have on LTIR. So they really only have 2.5 on LTIR in Tucker Pullman. Um, so this, so take 3.25 off of this, and suddenly the Canucks are right at the cap. I haven't done the math uh, entirely, um, but they are going to be right there. Was Bluger in included in this? Yeah, he was included. In this. So just Susie was not included in this, which basically is that Tanner Pearson contract. So add six and a half million and suddenly you are at about $700,000 in cap space, $800,000 in cap space, no cap space, essentially for the Vancouver Canucks. They're capped out. This is what the team's going to look like barring some winger trade. Uh, but let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Do you, you know, where do you think Carson Soucy's going to, or how he's going to finish up? Do you think that three-year deal is going to age poorly? Do you think it's going to be just fine? Ian Cole, not much to be concerned about cap-wise because you can just dump him at any time, really, this season if you need to. Uh, Teddy Bluger is one that I'm pretty excited about. Um, we're not giving $3 million to three-slash-four centers, and we're not giving them four years or three years, or whatever the hell they gave Jay, Jay Beagle. Um, this makes way more sense. Cheap, one year, good, fine. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Catch you next time.